All right, so today we are going deep right into the middle of the Milky Way. There's this uh, this puzzle there that has had astronomers stumped for years. Yeah. But there's a new study out just this month in uh, physical review letters. And they might actually have like a, a new piece of the puzzle, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's right. We're going to be looking at the uh, the central molecular zone, the CMZ. It's like the downtown of the Milky Way, right? Yeah. Just incredibly dense, a lot of activity going on. And the thing that has always been so interesting is that there's this this really high level of ionized gas just floating around in there. Right. And we haven't really been able to explain it with our traditional understanding of what causes ionization in space. Right. Okay. So when we think of space, we a lot of us think of like near perfect vacuum, right? Yeah. But there's actually gas and dust out there and that stuff can become ionized. Right. And, and usually the main thing that does that is cosmic rays, you know, just particles flying through space at ridiculous speeds. Yeah. They're like, they're like little pinballs just bouncing around in space. Yeah. And when they hit a neutral atom, they, they can knock an electron right off of it. Uh-huh. And that, that makes it have a positive charge, and that's what ionization is. Mm. And that usually explains it pretty well for a lot of different places in the galaxy. But, uh... but when scientists kind of did the math on this, they looked at like all the sources of cosmic rays that we know about in the CMZ, and they found a, a mismatch. There's, there's just way more ionized gas there than cosmic ray models would predict. Yeah. It's like if you walked into a room and there's a, a ton of paint spilled everywhere, but like only a couple of cans of paint. Yeah, it, it really is a mismatch. And and the mystery gets even weirder because those uh, those collisions between cosmic rays and the atoms that cause the ionization, those are really high energy collisions and they should produce another type of radiation called gamma rays. Mm -hmm. But when we look at the CMZ, we're not seeing anywhere near the number of gamma rays that we would expect if cosmic rays were really responsible for all of the ionization. Right. So we've got all this extra ionization, but we're kind of missing the smoking gun. Yeah, we're missing a really important piece of evidence. It's been it's been a thorn in the side of astrophysicists for a long time. And, and then, you know, of course we have dark matter, this mysterious stuff that makes up something like 85% of all the matter in the universe, but we yeah. can't see it directly. Right. And we know it's there because of its gravity. Right. But a lot of the focus focus in detecting it has been looking for its its gravitational pull or even trying to see if it'll interact with atomic nuclei directly like in these underground detectors. Yeah, and that's been going on for decades and we right. still haven't really found anything conclusive. Right. But this study, this is like a different approach. It's saying what if dark matter isn't just acting through gravity? Yeah. What if it's actually like directly involved in this ionization? Mm -hmm. And one of the researchers on the study, uh, Sean Balaji from King's College London, put it really well. He said, quote, we may have been overlooking its subtle chemical effects on the cosmos. I think that's a great way to put it. It's a whole new way to look for dark matter. So in this deep dive, we're going to try and really understand this ionization mystery at the Galactic Center. We're going to learn about this new dark matter candidate that they're proposing. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about what kind of evidence they have and what kind of evidence they still need to find. So let's let's get right into it. You know, this this central molecular zone, the CMZ, it's a pretty wild place. It's not just empty space. Right? No, it is. Uh, it's a very dense, crowded environment. There's a lot of gas and dust, star formation going on, all sorts of uh, energetic events. And that's where we see this surprisingly high level of ionization. Right. And, and the big question is, why is there so much more ionization than we would expect from the sources that we know about, like cosmic rays? Right. Why is that so important? Why is that discrepancy such a big deal? Well, cosmic rays have, for a long time, been the explanation for how things get ionized in interstellar space. Mm -hmm. You know, you have these really energetic particles traveling across vast distances. Mm -hmm. And when they collide with neutral atoms, they can actually knock an electron off of them, creating an ion. Mm -hmm. And we understand this process pretty well. Right, right. So it's like a cue ball hitting a bunch of other billiard balls. The cue ball is the cosmic ray. Mm -hmm. The other balls are the atoms. Yep. And when they hit, some of them scatter. And in this case, the thing that's scattering is an electron. Right. But in the CMZ, there are a lot more of these billiard balls getting knocked away than we would expect from the number of cue ball strikes. Exactly. When we calculate the rate of ionization that we should see based on the cosmic rays, it just doesn't match up with the observations. And then we have that missing piece of the puzzle, the gamma rays. 
Right, right. It's like seeing a bunch of footprints in the snow, but no sign of the person who made them. And, and then we have dark matter, right? This invisible stuff that, as we said, makes up the vast majority of the matter in the universe. Right. And we can't see it, but we know it's there because it has gravity. Yeah. And we've been trying to detect it, mm. mostly through its gravity. Right, or by trying to see if it collides directly with the nucleus of an atom. Right, like in those, in those experiments they have underground. Yeah, those are really sensitive detectors, but they're looking for like one specific type of interaction between dark matter and regular matter. Mm -hmm. And so far, they haven't found anything conclusive. Right. But this new idea, this is different. It's saying, hey, maybe we're not thinking about dark matter in the right way. Yeah. Maybe it's not just about gravity. Maybe it's interacting with normal matter in a more subtle way. Right. Maybe it's actually participating in the chemistry of the universe. Right. And, and this team, what they did was they didn't just look at the overall amount of ionization. They really dug into the details. They looked at how many ionization is distributed in space. They looked at the energies of the particles. Right. And they found that the pattern of ionization, the way it's distributed, it matches up really well with where we think dark matter should be most concentrated. So like, they took a map of where we think the dark matter is, and they laid it on top of a map of where this extra ionization is, and yeah. they lined up. Pretty much, yeah. And it's a much better match than with the distribution of normal matter, like stars and stuff like that. So that's pretty convincing, right? It's like, okay, maybe this dark matter is actually doing something. Yeah, and if that's true, then we might not need these really complex and expensive underground detectors to find it. We might be able to just look at the ionized gas with our telescopes. Right. But if this is dark matter, what kind of dark matter are we talking about? Because the usual suspects, like WIMPs and axions, those haven't really been confirmed yet. Right, and this dark matter candidate is different from those. It's a lot lighter. They think it has a mass of less than one GV. So like less than a proton. Yeah, a proton is about one GV. So this is a really lightweight particle. Mm -hmm. And the key thing about it is that it annihilates itself. When two of these particles meet, they destroy each other. Okay. And in that process, they create other particles. Right. Specifically an electron and a positron. So these dark matter particles are colliding, they're destroying each other, and they're creating electrons and positrons. Mm. And how does that lead to ionization? Well, those electrons and positrons, they have energy. Right. And when they collide with the gas that's in the CMZ, they can knock electrons off of those atoms, just like cosmic rays do. Oh, okay, so it's like a chain reaction. Yeah, the dark matter particles annihilate, they create these energetic particles, and then those particles go on to ionize the gas. Right, and and they say that this annihilation process is different from what you'd expect from other dark matter candidates. Yeah, a lot of the other candidates, like axions, for example, they're not predicted to create a lot of electron-positron pairs when they annihilate. Hmm. But this model, this specific type of lightweight dark matter, it predicts a lot of electron-positron pairs. Right, right. And and this process, this whole thing, would happen more often in a dense environment like the CMZ. Yeah, the denser the dark matter is, the more likely it is that these particles are going to run into each other and annihilate. Mm -hmm. And the CMZ is thought to have a very high density of dark matter. Okay, so that makes sense. Now, we've got these positrons, and positrons are antimatter. Yeah. What happens to them? Well, positrons don't last very long in a regular matter environment, so they're going to quickly find an electron. Uh -huh. And when they do, they annihilate each other. And when that happens, they release energy in the form of gamma rays and sometimes X-rays. Okay. And that's interesting because there are some faint gamma ray and X-ray emissions coming from the galactic center that we haven't been able to fully explain. Right. So maybe this is part of the explanation. So this model explains the ionization. It might explain some of the gamma rays and X-rays. Mm -hmm. And you said earlier that this all works within the known laws of physics, right? Yeah, that's important. We're not talking about some exotic new physics here. Yeah. The annihilation process, the interactions between electrons and positrons and regular matter, all that is well understood. Mm -hmm. What's new is the idea that this specific type of dark matter particle is what's causing it. Okay, okay. And you said that the ionization decreases as you move away from the galactic center, and that lines up with this model too. Yeah, the ionization is strongest right in the center, and then it gradually gets weaker as you move outward. Mm. And that's exactly what you'd expect if the ionization is being caused by dark matter, because the dark matter density 
is highest in the center. So it all fits together pretty well. Yeah, but it's still just a hypothesis. Great, of course. We need more evidence to be sure. So what kind of evidence would really convince people that this is what's going on? Well, one thing would be to get even better maps of the ionization of the CMZ. Mm -hmm. If we can show that the ionization really does follow the dark matter density profile perfectly, that would be really strong evidence. And there's a new NASA mission that might help with that, right? The the SI mission? Yeah, QSI is a gamma ray telescope that's specifically designed to be very sensitive to the energies of gamma rays that would be produced by this dark matter annihilation process. Okay. It's scheduled to launch in 2027. So if QSI sees the gamma rays that this model predicts, that would be a big deal. Yeah, it would be really strong evidence that this is what's happening. And what about other ways to verify this? Well, radio telescopes can also help. Mm -hmm. Different levels of ionization affect radio waves differently. Okay. So if we can get better radio observations of the CMZ, that could give us a more detailed picture of the ionization. Mm -hmm. And then there's always the possibility of finding this dark matter particle directly in a lab experiment. Right, right. And what about that prediction that we should see similar ionization patterns in other galaxies? Are people looking for that? Oh yeah, astronomers are already looking at the centers of other galaxies to see if they have this same excess ionization. Mm -hmm. If we find it in a lot of different galaxies, that would be really strong evidence for this model. Okay. Now, this is all about dark matter, but it also has implications for how we understand galaxies in general, right? Yeah, ionization is a really important process in galaxies. It affects how stars form, how galaxies evolve. Mm -hmm. So if dark matter is playing a role in ionization, that means it's influencing the evolution of galaxies in a way that we haven't really considered before. Wow. Of course, there are always other explanations, right? Yeah. Some people think that there might be undiscovered sources of cosmic rays that we just haven't found yet. Okay. Or maybe the magnetic fields in the galactic center are more complicated than we thought. Mm -hmm. And those could be responsible for the extra ionization. But the researchers behind this study, they think that their dark matter explanation is better. Yeah, they think it's simpler and it explains more of the observations. So we have to wait and see what future observations tell us. Yeah, the next few years are going to be really exciting for dark matter research. Okay, so just to sum up, we've been talking about a really interesting new idea that might explain this long-standing mystery of excess ionization in the center of the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. The idea is that there's a new type of dark matter particle, a really light one that annihilates itself, and that this annihilation process is what's causing the ionization. Right. And if that's true, it would be a huge discovery, not just for dark matter, but for our understanding of galaxies in general. It would be a big shift in how we think about dark matter, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Instead of just looking for its gravity, we might be able to see it directly through its effects on regular matter. Right. So here's a question for you to think about. If this dark matter is real and it's been interacting with regular matter all this time, what other effects might it have had on the universe? Yeah, that's a great question. What else might we be missing? Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for having me. This has been a fascinating deep dive. It really has. And we'll be keeping an eye on this story as it develops. Absolutely. There's a lot more to learn. So until next time, keep looking up. <laughs> keep wondering.